in the heart of New Orleans, a haunting tale unfolds. A story of corruption, betrayal, and a woman driven to the edge. Antoinette Frank, once a respected police officer, finds herself entangled in a web of darkness that leads to a tragic and shocking crime. Step into the gripping world as we unravel the chilling narrative of Antoinette Frank's descent into infamy. In the annals of history, a haunting reality emerges. The existence of those who perpetrated unspeakable atrocities. Condemned for their deeds, their fate sealed with the ultimate punishment, death. Enter New Orleans, Louisiana, a city woven into the fabric of chaos and resilience. Its past is painted with the blood of civil wars ravaged by relentless natural disasters and tainted by the sinister grip of corruption. Here, amidst the battleground of power between city and state, a tempestuous struggle unfolds, igniting a firestorm of tension. A city teetering on the edge, grappling with a declining populace, failing schools, and an insidious surge of crime. In the early 1990s, the FBI intervened to help the community combat corruption. Operation Shattered Shield, a sting operation in 1993, revealed evidence against a dozen officers involved in a protection racket. The city's police chief, Richard Pennington, worked tirelessly with various agencies to improve ethics and education within the department. However, trust in authority remained shattered. Some individuals intended to do good, but got caught in the cycle of corruption, while others were inherently corrupt from the start. This brings us to Antoinette Renee Frank. Born on April 30, 1971, Antoinette Renee Frank grew up in the rough areas of New Orleans. Her father, Adam Frank, was inconsistent in her life, and her brother turned into a fugitive. Antoinette faced physical and mental abuse and struggled with her own mental health issues. Despite her hardships, Antoinette dreamt of becoming a police officer. In June of 1992, she moved in with her father, but he disappeared in August 1993. Unfazed by his absence, Antoinette applied to the NOPD, lying about her mental health on the application. One psychiatrist, Philip Scaria, deemed her unfit for the job due to her shallow and superficial nature. However, due to the NOPD's need for fresh officers amidst corruption scandals, Antoinette reapplied and finally achieved her dream. She officially became an NOPD officer on February 7, 1993. Antoinette Frank applied to join the New Orleans Police Department, or NOPD, in 1993, despite several red flags in her application. She was caught lying multiple times and failed two psychiatric evaluations with one psychiatrist describing her as shallow and superficial. In an attempt to expedite her application, Frank resorted to extreme measures, leaving a suicide note and disappearing for over a day. Due to a chronic shortage of officers, the NOPD decided to hire Frank on February 7, 1993, even though their policy dictated that only New Orleans residents could be recruited. She graduated from the police academy on February 28, 1993. On November 25, 1994, Frank encountered Rogers Lacoste, a known drug dealer, during a shooting incident. While Frank claimed they had met eight months prior, investigators believed this was their initial contact. Their association quickly grew close and constant. On occasions, Frank introduced Lacoste as a trainee or her nephew, further blurring the relationship. It was later revealed that they had a sexual relationship, and Frank professed being deeply in love with Lacoste. Despite his involvement in a drug dealing and a shooting, Frank refused to sever ties with him, citing her unconditional support. During a Department of Corrections investigation, Frank refused to discuss her relationship with Lacoste, her involvement with Officer Williams or the Vos, or the murders that took place. Instead, she maintained her innocence and deflected questions, instructing investigators to refer to the records. While she maintained having a male suitor who worked in the police department, she provided no further details. Antoinette's colleagues witnessed her questionable actions, such as driving Rogers around in her police vehicle during duty hours and introducing him as her trainee. They even engaged in sexual encounters in the back of her cruiser amidst the dangerous street where Rogers conducted his drug dealings. Antoinette had successfully detached herself from Rogers' criminal history, blinded by love. Testimony from John Stevens and Anthony Wallace shed light on an incident involving Frank, Lacoste, and a fight that ensued after a party on February 4, 1995. Frank, in uniform, pulled over the car carrying Stevens and Wallace, 
ordering them out and to the back of the vehicle. Wallace noted Lacoste holding a weapon, leading to a physical altercation involving all parties. Another man joined the fight, and as the chaos escalated, Stevens managed to escape while Lacoste and Wallace were restrained. Frank declared Lacoste the innocent party, claiming Wallace was causing trouble. Wallace was subsequently arrested and charged with attempted murder and armed robbery. Civil Sheriff Irvin Bryant testified that on the same evening, he witnessed Frank fighting with two black males beside a police vehicle. When Wallace picked up a Tech-9 semi-automatic weapon, Bryant ordered him to drop it and restrain him. However, Frank intervened, asserting that Lacoste was with her and demanded his release. Strangely, Bryant was never questioned by the police and he never provided a formal statement. After the gruesome crime, Antoinette dropped Rogers off at an apartment complex before returning to the crime scene, pretending to be a responding officer. Suspicion fell upon her, and she was arrested on February 8, 1995, just four days after the tragic event. The evidence against Antoinette was overwhelming. Ballistic tests matched the bullets found at the crime scene to her service weapon, and witnesses identified her as the officer present during the shooting. During the trial, Antoinette Renee Frank maintained her innocence, claiming she was framed by corrupt fellow officers. She alleged that they planted evidence and manipulated the crime scene to implicate her. However, her claims lacked substantial evidence and the prosecution prevented a strong case against her. The jury found Antoinette Renee Frank guilty on multiple counts of first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and armed robbery. She was sentenced to death on August 20th, 1995, becoming the first woman in Louisiana to receive the death penalty since reinstatement in 1976. Antoinette Renee Frank's case sparked intense discussions and controversies within the criminal justice system. Some argued that her troubled past and history of mental health issues should have been considered during the sentencing phase, potentially sparing her from the death penalty. Critics also questioned the lack of accountability within the NOPD for failing to recognize and address the corruption within the ranks. Antoinette's case exposed the extent of the problem and raised concerns about the department's recruitment and screening processes. In response to the revelations and public outrage, the NOPD implemented significant reforms to rebuild trust and combat corruption. Stricter background checks, improved ethics training, and increased oversight were introduced to ensure the integrity of the department and its officers. Since her sentencing, Antoinette Renee Frank has resided on death row at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women in St. Gabriel, Louisiana. Life on death row is categorized by strict confinement and limited interaction with the outside world. Frank's legal team has continued to appeal her conviction and sentence, citing issues with her original trial, including claims of ineffective counsel and the alleged withholding of evidence by the prosecution. However, to date, these appeals have been unsuccessful and Frank remains on death row. Throughout her incarceration, Antoinette Renee Frank has maintained a assertion of innocence, claiming she was wrongly convicted. Her case has garnered attention from advocates and activists who opposed the death penalty and questioned the fairness of her trial. The case of Antoinette Renee Frank stands as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of corruption within law enforcement and the lasting impact it can have on individuals and communities. It highlights the importance of maintaining the integrity of the criminal justice system and the need for constant vigilance in upholding the principles of justice and accountability. As Antoinette Frank's story draws to a close, we're left with a chilling reminder of the depths to which corruption can sink. A city yearning for justice and safety haunted by the crimes of its own protectors. The tale of Antoinette Frank serves as a stark warning, a testament to the relentless pursuit of truth and the eternal struggle for redemption in the face of darkness. Thank you all for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos.